guys, it's been forever since I did a reading vlog, so I thought I would come take you along, I don't know, I guess these next few days. Um, I'm currently reading, I don't even know how many books, five, six, seven, I've kind of started all of them. Um, I kind of have already mentioned in various other outlets that we got another foster baby, um, currently it's five days ago. So we have a two-year-old foster boy and last week we got his six-month-old sister. Um, we use like, I don't know what the nicknames I guess online because we're not allowed to say their actual names. So our foster son is R2D2 and then his sister is BB8 because it goes really well together. Um, anyway, so my reading has been different in the last few days. Um, and so I thought maybe I would share like some ways that I'm getting reading in even though, you know, I'm caring for four kids and homeschooling and doing all that kind of stuff um, because a lot of people ask me that kind of thing. So I think I'll start by just telling you all the books I'm currently reading because I don't know what I'm all going to be working on, you know, through the next few days. I have a feeling I'm going to be just reading a little bit of everything. I don't even know if I'm going to get a book done, um, but I have my stack of classics here. So if you are part of my newsletter, um, you will already know that I came across an app called Serial Reader. Now, my blogging friend Callie told me about this and she has been doing some booktube videos lately, so I will leave her link below. Um, but there is an app called Serial Reader where you choose a classic that you want to read, or in my case, three, and every day they send you the next issue. And so each issue is at like a 10, approximately 10 minute um, reading duration. So. Uncle Tom's Cabin was one of my books for uh, February that I'm supposed to read, so I thought I would just start this on Serial Reader right now, so I'm only a couple days into this. Um, once I've got a few more books off my list for February, I will just like sit down and like actually finish this, but I'm reading that one that way. I'm also reading The Lost World. This was one of the classics that I wanted to read this year because I didn't read it last year, or it was on a TBR, but I didn't finish it. Um, I think I'm, yeah, two days into this one as well. And then I've got Anna Karenina, and I'm five days into this one right now, which doesn't get me very far. Honestly, like, Serial Reader, normally I would sit and read more than a 10-minute increment, um, but it's, I find it's not so overwhelming. Like, Anna Karenina, like, this book is heavy. It's very heavy. There's only 900 pages, but it feels like more. Um, so this one's supposed to take me 156 issues or days to read, or 159, I think but normally I wouldn't want to read it that, take, make it take that long, but I feel like it takes away a lot of that overwhelm. Uh, yeah, so I kind of just got kind of obsessed with the app and decided to start all three. Um, so I'm reading all of those. I'm also currently still reading through the Bible. I am doing it in 90 days. And uh, tomorrow is my last day in the Old Testament. And then I think I have 12 days for the New Testament. Oh, did I say 90 days? I meant 60. Um, I think it's 12 days in the New Testament and then I'm done. So I'll be done that before the end of February. Uh, so that takes up a good chunk of my time. And then I'm reading Iscariot by Tosca Lee. This is uh, biblical fiction. Oh, I thought it was like closer to halfway, but apparently I'm not even quite a third of the way through this one so far. Um, it's interesting. I'm reading this as a buddy read over on my Patreon and I think we're gonna have a Zoom chat about it. Of course, I was thinking about that prior to adding a six-month-old into the house, but I can probably make it work. Um, what else am I reading? I am reading a book called Spellbreaker. Someone mentioned this in the comments, now I don't remember who, that they really enjoyed the book. And the next book comes out in a couple months, I think, so I'm currently reading that on uh, Kindle, or on the Kindle app, actually just on my phone. Yeah, okay, and that's all I'm currently reading, but I kind of just like feel like starting all the books. Um, so I'm just going to, I think, keep chipping away at these books, and I, I'm, I'm hoping to not start anymore, at least until I finish one or two of them. Currently, Spellbreaker is the one that has captured my attention the most, so I'm probably going to read that for the next bit. Um, I don't like reading on my phone or on my tablet. It's not my preferred way. But that is one of my tips with a baby, like if you're waking up in the night, which I have been to feed her, then I have my phone, you know, it's lit, I can read it, um, and I don't have to worry about, it's, it's a lot ho harder to hold a physical book while holding a bottle and a baby. So 
that's been working really well for me. Even someone who has said time and time again, they don't like ebooks, it helps. So I'm gonna grab my tablet and then I think I will read that book for a bit. So I'm really enjoying this book, Spellbreaker. Um, it's so far our main character is a woman who um, can undo spells. I guess in this world there's people that can cast spells and people that can undo them. And um, I guess we have two main characters, but like the main main one can undo them. And yeah, I really have no idea where this book is going. I didn't read anything about it. I just went in blindly because of a recommendation, because I like to do that. And so far it's a really easy read. Um, it's kind of the book I'm defaulting to when, like at the beginning of each day, I'm trying to read my um, serial reader books. So often like at midnight when I'm feeding the baby for the first time, I'll like read one or two of those. Um, but then throughout the day, this is kind of the book I've been gravitating to. I'm not very far yet because I haven't had a ton of time. I'm 32% in, um, but I do try to use this time, nap time, when both of the littles have a bit of a nap overlap to do some reading. This is kind of generally my reading slash working on videos and stuff. I know some people like to clean when their kids are napping and stuff, but for me this is like just do all the things I enjoy and I can do the work when kids are awake. Um, yeah, so I'm going to probably read for a bit more, but I think one of them is going to wake up soon. So I'm gonna do that where I can actually listen for them. I'm excited to continue with this book though and see where it goes because it's a lot of fun and I'm hoping I enjoyed enough that I wanna read book two as well. Yesterday I spent quite a bit of time reading. I totally got into that Spellbreaker book and yeah, I read quite a bit in the afternoon and then I ended up staying up late last night 
and feeling very tired today as a result but I wanted to finish it and I did and I really enjoyed it. So I partly wanted to read it because someone recommended it but also I wanted to read it because book two is coming out in a couple months and it's on NetGalley and I requested it and actually got approved so I want to read that one really soon. Possibly start it today. Um, but because I did read quite a bit yesterday I find like my days are not necessarily always balanced. Um, people often ask me like how I can you know homeschool my kids have two to four kids at any given time um you know run a house write on blogs do youtube um like how i do it all that kind of question i get asked quite a bit and i think for me a lot of it has to do with like balance throughout the week but not every day is balanced often my days are kind of like quite themed so i would say yesterday's theme was reading it was definitely a heavy on the reading side. I currently have like a mountain of clean laundry that I need to put away. Um, I put off my work that I was going to do yesterday, so I'm in the middle of editing a video. Um, tried to do that this morning a little bit. I got a few minutes in, but it was hard to do with three kids in the room. All kind of making noise. So, you know, like, the, like there's trade-offs. So if I spend quite a bit of time reading one day, I have to kind of make up for it the next few days. So in the night, well, okay, so I stayed up reading till about 12.30, partly because I went out for coffee with a couple of girls from church. Um, we we're doing like these smaller groups. So I have two ladies that I can meet with um, pretty much every week, I guess we're going, going to do. And that fits in the COVID rules. We're allowed to have, you know, up to four people at a table at a coffee shop, so we can do that. And it's been wonderful to get away. We have like this nice balance of like, hysterical laughter and sarcasm and then like really deep talk and I've been loving those evenings but then last night after I got home I just like needed time to decompress I couldn't go to bed right away um, so I read and then I read till 12 30 and then when the baby was up at like three something that's when I took time to use serial reader and I did my Anna Karenina reading for the day so what am I I think I'm seven days into that one now um, and I'm not even, okay, so I've read up, I've finished chapter six, I think it looks like, which in my actual book means that I'm only, okay, so if I finish chapter six, <laughs> yeah, I'm on page 29, and it's been six days, um, but yeah, it's just a less overwhelming way to read it, and it's, that's really working for this, um, and then at the next feeding, when she was up at was it like 6 30? I don't know. The times all kind of just jumbled together. Then I took time to do my Bible reading. It's like I'm a little bit more weak than, than I am at, you know, in the middle of the night. And I didn't finish that while she was eating. I kind of finished it throughout the morning. So I finished the Old Testament. So I started the day after Christmas, finished the Old Testament. So the next 12 days I'll be reading through the New Testament. And then I will have read the Bible in 60 days. Um, and I'm looking forward to being done that and like deep diving into like actually studying smaller portions of the Bible. Um, so I, oh, I did actually also, oh, I think one of her feedings this morning, I read the next section in The Lost World, so I'm like only three days into this. I think this one is 28 days. The Lost World, yes, I finished three days out of 28. And then I have not read My Uncle Tom's Cabin reading for the day. Um, I'm going to read number three out of 68. Uh, yeah. So then yesterday, one of the errands that I ran before my coffee was a library trip and I have a bunch of middle grade books that I'm going to be sharing probably in my ne next video. I'm going to do like a middle grade uh, possibility pile for March. Uh, so two of the middle grade books that I didn't, two books that I got that weren't middle grade. Oh my goodness, that lack of sleep is, you know, I can feel it. Um, I got Becoming Elizabeth Elliot. Uh, about a month ago, I ran into a lady at the library that's from my church, this wonderful, sweet, older woman who I haven't seen since COVID because, you know, whatever. Um, she recommended this book, Becoming Elizabeth Elliot. She said it was one of her favorite books that she's read recently, and she has really good book recommendations. And I love Elizabeth Elliot, so I'm curious about this one. Um, and then I got The House of Silk. I am trying to do better. So what I do is I request my books from my library on the website and then they take like two weeks to like six weeks to come in generally. Um, and so by the time they get to me, I forget why I requested them. So I started doing a list of library requests. This one, okay. A subscriber recommended this one because of my love for Sherlock. See, I wrote that down. I didn't write the subscriber's name. I don't know why, but whatever. Um, so this is a Sherlock Holmes novel written by someone else. 
So, I don't know if they're writing as Sherlock. I don't know. I'm very curious to see how this goes. Um, and then I have, yeah, like a list of books that I've requested from the library that have not come in yet that sound really good and, yeah, none of these have come in yet. Um, they sound really good and now I actually know why I requested them or who suggested it. So yeah, uh, I am going to hopefully finish editing this video before our kids wake up from their naps and then maybe squeeze in some reading yet some time today. I need to finish my Uncle Tom's Cabin issue first and then um, hopefully I can work my way into Spellmaker, which is book two. Okay, so we're gonna attempt this little reading update with a baby in the room, but now she's just smiling at me and making noise, so I'm not sure if this will work. She uh, might just start screaming because it's almost nap time. We will see! Yeah! Well, she thinks it's funny. Um, so yesterday I did spend some time reading Spell Maker. It's very confusing to go from Spell Breaker to Spell Maker. Um, and I'm not quite enjoying um, the book. So let's see how far I am. This I'm reading on NetGalley, so is this going to work? I don't know. I'm 33% done. Um, this one does give me vibes of Mark of the Raven. Hey! Um, I read at the end of Spell Breaker in the acknowledgments the first person the author acknowledged was God, and I was like, oh, I couldn't tell from book one that this was written by a Christian author, um, which isn't always a bad thing. Like, there was no red flag, so I was like, well, this isn't. Um, but I kind of like when Christian authors, you can't tell, and they can, like, infuse parts of the gospel in their books, and then they can appeal to non-Christian readers. Um, so this book, and then so <laughs> she's giggling. Uh, the second one, there's like, there's like a few parts where like now the character is praying, which I like, and then there's a few like Mark of the Raven vibes. I'm not gonna give away what it is. Um, but then there's a few times where I'm like, oh, is that person using God's name in vain, or is this kind of like a prayer? I don't really know. And then I, it's like, huh, that's weird because it. I feel like it should either be a prayer, obviously a prayer, or not in there. I'm kind of confused by that. But overall, I am enjoying the storyline. I can't really say anything about it. I didn't really describe book one well. So you got like some people that have magic, some people that don't. Some people that are spell makers that can cast spells. Some people that can break spells or spell breakers. And then there's like four different areas, um, like spiritual, physical, and I don't remember the other two. So like spell makers kind of have to choose an area that like they can only make spells in that area. So some of them can like read people's minds and like those kind of spells some people can do like physical things and yeah it's it's cool it's an interesting concept and um i quite enjoyed book one and a lot of book two i'm enjoying more um there is like one trope going on right now that's kind of like a people just not talking about what they're actually feeling that bothers me in books in general because in life in general because i think people should just talk it out instead of just oh, this is the person feels this way because they did this, but they never actually talked to the person to find out if that's actually how they feel. Um, but other than that, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, possibly more than book one, maybe just because I'm invested in the characters. And book two takes place one week after book one. I love it when there's like not a long time frame in between. I hate it when you like finish a book, you pick up the next one and you find out like four years have passed. And it's like, well, what were my characters doing during those four years? I want to know. Um, yeah. So I'm reading that and then still continuing on with my three books here. I haven't read Uncle Tom's Cabin yet for today. I think is my classic I haven't read. I'm so tired today. I think I'm feeling the 
effects of going to sleep at 12.30 the night before. Like it always seems to take two days and I just woke up exhausted. Yeah, so I haven't read this one yet today because um, it was a 12 minute reading time and my other two were shorter ones for today. <sighs> this book, now I remember why I didn't finish it the first time. I just, it's just so hard. Um, and I hear it's really well done, but like at the beginning of the book, um, this slave owner, a really nice guy, is in debt and he is going to need to sell a couple of his really good slaves to a guy who is not so nice. And the not so nice guy's like, oh, you know, like they're just black people. They don't really have attachments to their kids and this and that. And it's just like, oh, it's so hard to read about. Um, but I want to continue with it because I've heard really good things. It's just, I, I struggle with the heaviness of it. Um, I was originally planning to like finish this book this month, whatever month we're in, February. I think I'm just going to continue with the um, serial reader and do like those 10-ish minute increments a day because this one's so heavy. I don't, I don't want to just plow through it. I just, I feel like that would just burden me. <laughs> um, the Lost World. I'm quite enjoying this one. So um, I'm 14% through apparently already. Like it's a fairly short book. Um, the beginning of this, the main character, like, he wants to propose to a girl, but she doesn't want to marry him, or doesn't he want him to propose because he's, like, not interesting enough, so he kind of, like, sets out to find some kind of adventure to be interesting to her. It's an interesting start, and then, um, I don't know, somewhere, <clears throat> excuse me, somewhere along the lines, there's going to be dinosaurs. I'm already getting a glimpse of that, so that's interesting. This is, like, Sir Ar Arthur Conan Doyle, the guy that wrote Sherlock, this is a like sci-fi book of his. And then Anna Karenina. This one, I really wish actually, and maybe they do sell this, I should look. I would love to buy a book that is a summary of the most popular classics. It has like a short summary, like two pages maybe. And then like some points about like what people think about the book. Um, maybe like some questions to make you uh, just like think about, about the book deeper yourself. Uh, I'm getting really confused by these um, Russian names and the fact that I have continually read this book at between 1 and 3 in the morning when I'm up with the baby with the first feeding. So I'm very confused as to what's going on, so I need to read a summary of this. Um, but yeah, this is going to take me a while. So I think I will end the reading vlog here. The baby is like slowly making like a circle around the floor here. Um, I need to go put her down for a nap. It's been a while since I did this kind of reading vlog. Um, I would like to do them more, but they do take a bit more effort, I guess. I would love to hear what you've been reading lately. Um, if you have a recommendation of like a summary, like I know I can go online and get like summaries of classic books, but I would like just like one bind up that has, you know, like 150 of the most popular classics or something like that. I think that would be really good. Um, yeah, let me know what you've been reading. Um, if you've enjoyed or hated any of these classics, I think no matter what people's opinions are, I'm going to try to continue all three of them, but I'm always curious to hear what you guys think about books. So thanks again for watching guys.